The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. So I'll share a story with you that happened this week, also on the same trip to, uh, the same trip to LA, but this was on the way to Los Angeles. So for those of you that know me, they know that I, this happens to me. This stuff happens to me. I do those, these things sometimes. I leave Friday morning, 8.30 in the morning was our flight, 8.30 a.m. And the whole time I was a little bit nervous because flying on Friday morning, not a good idea. And Blee Nedder, I will not do it again, but I did it this, I did it last Friday. Uh, I shouldn't have. Anyway, I get to the airport. We're there early. We left the house at like 6 a.m. We get there like two hours before the flight, like all good. Um, I use my Nexus card to check in. I go through security, go through everything, get the bags, whatever, check in. And then I get to customs. I don't know what's with me in customs. I, I, I'm not good luck with customs. Anyway, I get to the customs line and the guy says, passport. I said, sure. I reach down into my suitcase. I take out two passports, one for me, one for my son. He looks at one of them. He says, Eliyahu. And my son says, yes. And then he looks at me and he says, Chaya Sara. And I said, no. Why? What do you got there? And he shows me my daughter's passport. I'm like, you're joking. And at that moment, like my heart dropped. And I was just like, Ainod Mavado. Like, Hashem, if you want me on this plane, that's where I'm going to go. And if you want me to stay in Toronto, then that's where I'm going to be. And that's, I'm just going to be where you want. And Baruch Hashem, the guy says, no worries. You have a Nexus card. You're fine. Go ahead. I said, great. Hashem, Kodesh Baruch you're amazing. We get to the plane and now it's time. They're calling our uh, zone, zone three. We get up. It's our turn. I get to the plane. They say passports and boarding passes, please. So I take out my boarding pass and I got there and I said, you know, I actually don't have a passport um, because I left it and my daughter has tried to explain to them. And she says, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I need to swipe a passport. Like you see this machine that you swipe it here. I'm like, I know, I know, I, I know, but I have a Nexus card, so if you can just swipe that. She goes, no, 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 this swipes passports. I need a passport for you to get on the plane. And we're right there, and the line is building up behind me, and I'm like, Hashem, if this is where you want me, that's where I'm going to be. If you want me to be in Toronto for Shabbos, this is where we'll be. If you don't want me to make the bar mitzvah, I'm just going to kabbal it ba'ahava. Hashem, whatever you want, this is I'm just accepting. Whatever you send me away, I accept it. And I do believe, and we've talked about this in the past in other shiurim, that b'schus emuna, when a person can have emuna, when a person can have belief um, in a dark time, when it seems like there's like no light at the end of the tunnel, when it seems like there's just a dead end, and a person has emuna during a time like that, the schus of doing that can actually bring the Yeshua. Okay, the merit of being able to have emuna when things are so dark can actually change the situation and open the door for you to be able to, to keep going. Anyway, I said, like, so I'm, I'm going, okay, what am I going to do? So so she turns to the person next to her. She says, he doesn't have a passport. And she goes, oh, that's all right. No problem. Just manually type in his Nexus card. Whew. Baruch Hashem. Get on the plane. Amazing. Fine. My wife gave me one task while I was in L.A. She said, we need to get a social security number for my son, and you have to mail it in the U.S., whatever, so she gave me all the paperwork and I get to the US and I mail and I, I and I, I go to my, my first stop after arriving in LA was the Social Security office. I get to the Social Security office and I have all the paperwork and I sit down in front of the guy and you know, passport. I'm like, well, it's actually a social security number for my son, not for me. Right, right, right. But you have a passport because you need you need a passport. I'm like, I just traveled like across from like different country to get like, I need, this is my, I'm not even here for the bar mitzvah. It's all about the social security number. Like I really, and the guy was just like, okay, what do you have? Uh, he's like, do you have at least an American driver's license? I was like, no, but I have a Canadian driver's license. He's like, okay, give me what you have. So I was like, okay. I gave it to him. He's processing everything. Baruch Hashem. I'm feeling great. It's going great. And then he says, I'm sorry, I can't help you. And he gives me all the paperwork. He gives everything back to me. I'm like, what's what's going on? He says, your son's passport, it was a temporary passport that they gave during COVID and it needs a five, it needs a five-year passport. It has to actually have an expiration for five years. 
and your son's only has a one-year expiration on it, and so therefore, I can't really help you. I said, well, what are my options? He says, well, uh, if you can get another form or whatever from a doctor or a letter, it has to be the original. I'm like, okay, that's not happening. And at this point, I was, I was, I stopped. And I would literally, I just said to myself, ain't old movado, ain't old movado, ain't old movado. There's only Hashem in the world. There's only Hashem. And I, and my goal was to be mekabalit ba'ahava again. That Hashem, if, that if, if this is going to work out, I'm going to say thank you, Hashem. And if it's not going to work out, I'm going to say thank you, Hashem. And no matter what, it, it, I just want to accept it as, as whatever your will is. So he says, no, I'm sorry, I can't help you. So then I turned to the guy, and again, calmly, very calmly, I said to him, can you find out if there's anyone you can speak with who might know how to get around this or how to get through this? He says, okay, let me see what I can do. So he goes, he leaves, he comes back. He says, I'm sorry, there's nobody here. There's nobody I can ask. And then he looks at me, and and my goal was that if it works out, it was important for me not, I mean, yes, to say thank you to the guy, but when I say thank you to him, if it works out, when I say thank you to him, to have in mind that I'm really saying thank you to Hashem. I'm looking the guy in the face, but I'm saying thank you to Hashem. So he hands it back to me, he says no, and then he says, all right, you know what? I'll just put in a, I'll put in a date for five years from now. And I just looked at him and I thought of Hashem and I said, thank you. And that was it. And I feel like um, when we can not just have a muna in our mind and in our heart, but to be able to remain tranquil, this is a muna and bitachon. And that's what the Chovas Halavavos writes. The Chovas Halavavos writes, duties of the heart. He says in Shah HaBitachon, he says, Mahus HaBitachon, what is bitachon? What is a muna bitachon? Menuchas HaNefesh HaBoteach. It's tranquility of the person who's having faith. When a person is able to remain tranquil in a challenging situation, that's called bitachon. That's when you're taking your emuna, which exists in your mind and in your heart, and you're putting it into your life, that's called bitachon. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.